Hey, what's going on everyone? Today I'm gonna to show you how you can get power from your Tesla's high voltage battery and be able to use it for anything you want. Coffee maker, your oven, your grill tools, anything. This was sent to us by T. Elliard. We have reviewed a lot of their products. This is a one-stop shop for all Tesla accessories. And right here, this is the V1 version. There is one that is the, the V2 where there is 240 volt outlet here. So that is 10 kilowatt if you are interested in that. Of course, the price tag is pretty high. And this is the one that we are reviewing today. So it shows 899. I'm going to show you how you can knock this down to somewhere in the 600 uh, with the code here in just a second. But that is your option here. For US, there is only 2 kilowatt option. For UK, there is a 4 kilowatt option because of the CCS uh, compatibility here. There is also EU one. So um, if we do the 2 kilowatt option for uh, the US and if we hit add to cart on the checkout screen, if you go here and put a discount code S H I V A T E S L A, so Shiva Tesla, you hit apply. This is going to go down to 674. You got a $224 discount. Uh, I'll let you be the judge if this is worth it for you or not. But that's how you can save some money. This is affiliate code. We do earn a very small commission at no additional cost to you, which greatly helps us bring videos like this in the future. Let's continue. So this is everything you get with the kit. You get the gun itself that goes and does the whole V2L. There's a fan here. Um, there's the outlet. So that's the main outlet. And they only have one outlet. I wish they had more or like even the 240 volt, but they just have this one here. This is for the starter. I'll show you here. You got a USB-C and then there is just the power button here. This is of course the NAC. You can get the uh, CCS, the other version as well. And EU would have a different plug and they give you a starter kit that you need to plug in. So step one of this process, of course, you got to open your charge port and just plug in the gun here. Nothing is going to happen on the indicator light because we haven't actually started this yet. If you try to press a power button here, it's just not going to work. There's no light because we need a starter kit for this. So on our Tesla Model Y, you can use the back. Uh, this is the back connection here. You just have to plug this into the back cigarette lighter port. For Model 3, you are going to, of course, have to route it to the front. And this just has a DC. So we have routed the DC plug from the back cigarette lighter port. Now we're just going to plug this in. Now at that point, what you do is you press here and it is going to start blinking and you see the communication is being established with the blue flashing there. And that is going to eventually turn into green flashing. So as you saw there, and this is going to be steady blinking there. That means it has successfully established that communication. Now Tesla thinks it is charging. So if we were to go over there and look at the screen, it is going to show that the Tesla is charging so you see, it is 20 minutes, 4 kilowatt. Uh, so that's what it is doing, it's charging right now. And at this point, you don't have to keep plugging this in. You can just unplug this. And now this will just keep going on because it has already created that communication with Tesla. And now it is blinking green. Tesla thinks you are charging the car. So now let's just start by plugging in this space heater. You are, you are camping. If you want some heat, you can use this. You simply plug in in this port here. So it goes in, plugs into this port. Now, let's see if we can get power. Looks like there is power and we're able to use it. And this is working. I can feel the air coming through. So space heater is working. So the power is on and you're able to utilize the power just through this port here. It's a little tight, so be careful while pulling it out. You don't wanna yank it out and break anything there. Exact same deal with this light. We're simply going to plug this in here and we will turn this on. And you saw that the light toggled on. That means that is good to go. Now the ultimate test of this device is going to be if it charges uh, other Tesla here. And as you see, everything is good. Now Tesla's uh, mobile connector here, it has green. Normally if there's anything wrong that it start flashing red. We're going to take this and plug it into our Highland here. So now it is establishing the communication. It is blinking. It approved it. Now it has started flashing green. That means it has started charging. Let's go and see what is happening here. So we says 12 amp max charging at one kilowatt. And yeah, so 10 out of 12 amp charging at one kilowatt, 24 plus hour remaining. So of course, this is going to take a long time, but it is charging. So even though it is advertised at two kilowatt, Tesla is only sensing that as one kilowatt. 
and you are able to change that, right? Like you can make that a 12 amp or set it to 10. I wanted to start with 10 just so that it is a lower amp there, but you can up that to 12 amp looks like. And yeah, everything is happy. It is charging. There's no issue with the car. And uh, you can see that, of course, it's gonna be a slow charging. Now this charging is gonna be super slow because you are getting in a 10 to 12 amp of charging here. So it is going to take a long time to fully charge this uh, vehicle using this method, but that is intended for the purpose of this. This is not supposed to have fast charge your car. This is supposed to just get you out of an emergency. If your car is dropping too low, then it just does that for you where it gives you enough juice to get out of that situation if you're camping. So you can do vehicle to vehicle charging at that point, but just expect that it's gonna take a long time. It's just gonna be like plugging into your 110 outlet on your garage where it charges, you know, three to four miles per hour or something like that. So that's what you're gonna get using this system. So if we go to service center and look at it, the, the contractors are uh, here, they're closed and everything is happy. It is says it's charging, even though it's discharging, but you can see that it is really charging. So if we go to charger here, it is thinks that it's CCS charging, uh, latch enable line, everything is good to go. As you see, there is no fault or anything. So the system is happy. It has established the communication. It has the power and everything good to go. So all intensive purpose Tesla things that we're CCS charging at this time here. Now, once you're done, you can simply unplug whatever device that you are powering here. Then this is still blinking. Then you just press this button here and then it unlatches this and you are good to go. Tesla stops showing at its charging. It says stop charging. Then you simply pull this out. Tesla is gonna close that and you are good to go. So this is the device that just did that for you. Now, a couple of caveats with this system. If your car is already at 100%, this is not gonna work because it emulates charging the Tesla. And if Tesla is at 100%, Tesla is done. It's not gonna open this up for additional charging. So this is not gonna work if it is 100% charged. 99, yeah, but ideally somewhere in the lower range so that this actually works. If it is below 20%, I wouldn't recommend plugging this in because then you're gonna further draw down your battery and you are gonna risk not having the battery and depleting the battery. So it is gonna have some complications with under 20%. So I recommend keeping this at above 20% and of course under 100%. Normally, Tesla does not allow you to have a V2L charging. This is not authorized by Tesla, not endorsed by Tesla, not certified by Tesla. So if you go and ask Tesla, this does not exist. That is where third-party companies always figure out exploit and Tesla's firmware or somewhere to allow you to be able to take advantage of things like this. Now, how it works is they actually use a non-charging protocol called CCS charging. That's a very common DC fast charging. Other vehicles like Hyundai's and whatnot use that primarily. Uh, you know, Tesla has the NACS standard, but Tesla does allow CCS standard uh, to be able to fast charge your Tesla. So when you go on DC fast charging, you can use that. So what this device does is basically this has firmware and they have programmed this device to act like a CCS charger. So you plug this into the Tesla, just like any other charger, Tesla is gonna blink a little bit. It's not gonna give you that instant green and start charging. That is when internally, very, very quickly, Tesla is actually having a communication between the charger and the Tesla's battery system. So this charger goes in, plugs in, tells Tesla, hey Tesla, I'm a CCS charging station. Can you allow me to charge you at a you know, certain rate? Tesla goes back and checks like, let me first check the proximity, the insulation. Let me first make sure that you are safe and I will allow you to charge me. Then it does the initial check, pre-charging check and everything just works because they program it in to make it believe that this is a DC fast charging station. So Tesla is like, okay, I've done my test, this all worked. Now, once Tesla does that initial check, it actually goes in and negotiates a charging rate and everything from this device. So Tesla goes in and say, okay, I see your output parameters here. I'm gonna allow you to charge me at two kilowatt max and whatever the charging parameter that Tesla feels like it is safe for his battery. That is what Tesla uh, negotiates and agrees within that communication that is also called a handshake here. So then once that goes through, Tesla closes his connector and said, this is your allowable, your approved rate for charging me. You're all good to go. All intensive purposes, Tesla think that it is being charged. That is when this device goes in and flips that. So Tesla is thinking it is being charged at two kilowatt. It is being charged at a certain rate, but this device goes in with the firmware, it flips it. Now Tesla is all of a sudden being discharged, but Tesla doesn't know that because you know when they did the agreeable communication earlier, 
it was agreed upon that Tesla was going to be charged at that rate. Tesla still thinks that is happening, and this device does that trick. So it's a spoofing device. It is basically tricking Tesla into believing it is charging at that rate, but you are discharging it. Then it has an inverter here that converts the DC from Tesla's battery into AC. This is just like a solar charger, right? Like it just works like that. So in a nutshell, Tesla thinks that this is an approved CCS charger, just like any other charger out there. Tesla thinks that it is charging. It is within allowable limits of Tesla, so it allows you to do that safely. But this device is tricking the Tesla into, you know, believing it is charging, but it's actually discharging it. So what are the risks associated with that? First of all, as I said earlier, Tesla does not approve this. This is not a native feature that Tesla ha allows that. So that is number one risk that should tell you a lot. Another issue is that if there is any shorting over current, over voltage, this device is very smart. I've seen that when it starts drawing too much, it just shuts down. So it is not going to be drawing too much from Tesla. It has those safety checks built into this device, but you never know. This is a third party device going into Tesla. So the ultimate risk with this, even though they are using the safety standards of a CCS into charging this Tesla, but discharging it, uh, everything just checks out, but you do have that risk that Tesla is not allowing it. If anything goes south, if Tesla's BMS system fails, you are, do you damage the contactors on the Tesla or anything because of using this device, Tesla is going to make you pay for all of those repairs, even if your car is still under the warranty. So there's always a huge risk with device like this. There is a huge benefit too of being able to use this device and be able to power your appliances and whatnot. But I do want you to be aware of those risks. So what do you all think about this device? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you have a use cases for it on your Tesla? Uh, I'm interested in knowing your feedback. They did mention that they uh, have an optional plug where you can plug in right here and get to a 240 volt, uh, basically an outlet. So you can get a 240 from this, not just 120 by plugging in here. And then that is an optional wiring that they send you where you can plug it in and make the 240 appliances happy. I told them if they could just put a NEMA 1450 in the back or on the side, they say that that plug is going to be too big with all the components that they need to fit. And it is already a smaller form factor they are going for. They do have a higher price unit with the 240 already built in. Again, in the link down below, you can check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found today's video helpful, would like to see more Tesla videos in the future, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and come back again soon.